that's not right. 32, that's what I'm doing there, 32 rental doors. I bought a 32 unit apartment complex without using any of my own money. In this video, I'm gonna tell you how I did it so you can do it too. I have actually bought three apartment complexes without using any of my own money. I'm gonna take you back to the very first one, the 32 unit apartment complex that we bought without using any of our own money. It was a roller coaster of a ride. We didn't know what we were doing, but we figured it out. So I'm gonna take you back to the beginning now and you really won't believe how it ended. Kind of crazy. Before I get into this, make sure to hit that like button over there. You can hit it as hard or as soft as you want, but please hit it. This is an awesome video that we put some time together for. So hit that like button, I'd really appreciate it. I always wanted to own apartment complexes for a ton of different reasons. Adding a bunch of doors at one time, getting a bunch of cash flow quickly is the biggest reason why I wanted to, you know, get as many doors as I can in an apartment complex is a great way to do that. However, I thought I was going to have to save up a long time. How long would I have to save cash flow or for my normal job to come up with two, three, four hundred thousand dollars for the down payment? Or how many houses we're going to have to flip? to come up with that down payment. So I had this big dream of owning apartment complexes, big, medium, small, whatever they may be, but you have to put 20% down, you have to put money down on these, so it was just more of a pipe dream, honestly, but I figured out a way to do it without using any of my own money, so let's talk about that. Let's take you back to the very beginning. How did we find the deal? Apartment complexes are very similar to houses right now. They are very, very hard to come by. We bought this apartment complex about five years ago. It was hard to come by then too, but, there are certain things you can do and certain connections you can make to get these deals brought to you first. So a lot like single family houses, you need to get in front of the right people to bring you the deal. So how we bought this deal was an apartment complex broker, kind of like a wholesaler, but a little more of a business type of entity that brokers apartment complexes. So get to know your local apartment complex broker so they can bring you the deals first. I have five or six that I contact once or twice a month to let them know that I'm still looking for apartment complexes, that I have money to close and I'm ready to go. So you need to contact those people. You need to join your local real estate investing Facebook group. There's a bunch of crap on there. There's a bunch of scammers on there. There's a bunch of stuff on there, but there are deals on there. There are legit people and there are legit brokers on there as well. So join that, ask for legit apartment complex brokers right on your Facebook page or your Instagram page, whatever it may be that you are looking for apartment complex brokers. You need to get in front of these people, find those apartment complex brokers by simply asking. You might have to ask twice, this is not easy. This takes hard work. Real estate investing is hard work. You're not going to do one Facebook post and have five apartment complex brokers. But if you do that for a couple months, if you have five or six posts and go to several meetings, you will find them. So that's how we found this deal was an apartment complex broker. So let's go over some initial numbers. It was a 32 unit apartment complex that we bought for $1.1 million. How did we fund it? How did we not use any of our own money to buy it? We kind of did a quasi burrs. If you know what the burrs is, probably a third of my videos on here are about the burrs method, how to buy cash producing real estate using other people's money. We figured out a way to do that with apartment complexes. What did we do? So $1.1 million purchase, but we needed to put 20% down on it. So we needed $220,000. We went to our main private lender. We have been developing relationships with private lenders and hard money lenders since we started this about six, seven years ago. A couple of them said no, but we had one say yes. He was willing. We showed him the deal, showed him the numbers. We were very transparent. He was willing to fund the entire down payment, the $220,000 needed down on the apartment complex to make that initial purchase. How did we fund it with him? How did we get him to commit to that? We had a track record with him of showing him that we paid him back every single time he had loaned us money in the pack. You might not be able to do this with your very first private lender, but you will be able to do this eventually. So how did we get him to do it financially? So he gave us $220,000. We told him we would pay him 8% annualized. I should probably do some math. $220,000, which is what he gave us for the initial down payment. So we owed him $17,600 throughout the year divided by 12. So we owed him $1,467 a month, but we took that out of cash flow. So we said, you give us the 220, we'll give you $1,467 a month, which is 8% annualized throughout the loan cycle, which is going to be two, three, four years. We'll get to that here in a second. He got a good check every single month that was secured by the actual asset and the cash flow out of the asset. That interest payment that we were paying him did not come out of our pocket. It came out of the cash flow of the property. So we did that. Put $220,000 down. We owed him a certain amount, that $1,467 a month, 
8% interest. And then we owe the bank, obviously, the mortgage. So the mortgage, the owning expenses, the, the slight repairs we did to the property, all of that came out of the cash flow of the property. We weren't cash flowing a ton because we were paying interest to the bank, all owning expenses, we were paying interest to the private lender, and then we were doing things to the property to spruce them up, but that's just part of it. We knew we weren't gonna get a ton of cash flow at first, but we weren't using any of our own money, so that's okay. So we did that for two years. We added things to the property, we spruced up the units as the tenant moved out from cash flow, and we increased efficiencies. That's how this whole thing works. You need to grow value of the asset quickly through forced appreciation. What's forced appreciation? Good question. Forced appreciation is making the asset go up in value. You are forcing it to go up in value. Houses, you know, things like that just go up in value with the market as the market goes, but with long-term assets that are a big asset class like apartment complexes or things like that, you can force the value to go up by increasing cash flow and decreasing expenses. No, we didn't stop taking care of the tenants. We just created efficiencies. We have a good property management company in-house that we were able to cut down on expenses and increase cash flow by getting units up to market ready condition and charging market prices. Over two years, paid the bank, all owning expenses. We paid our private lender and we took all cash flow and put it back into the building for two years. We cash flowed a little bit, but not a ton. But at the end of those two years, we had a great apartment complex that was in great condition, that we were managing efficiently, that we increased a lot of cash flow too. Obviously, a lot of the cash flow is going to those things I mentioned earlier, but we increased the cash flow by quite a bit. So what did we do at that two-year timetable, right at that two-year? We took the property to a small local bank, which you can do a bigger bank with apartment complexes if you need to, but we took it to our small local bank that we have a relationship with, and they appraised the property. They went out and sent out a third-party appraiser, say, here is what the property is worth. The property appraised because we added value, and it took two years for $1.6 million. So we were able to add $500,000 of equity by increasing the cash flow and decreasing the expenses and still taking care of our tenants. Now we're gonna tap into that equity to pay back our initial lender, that 220, and then we're gonna own the property ourselves. So here's how the numbers broke down. The property appraised for $1.5 million. We did an 80% cash out refinance of $1.2 million. So what we did at the end of those two years was we took the property to a bank to appraise it to do an 80% cash out refinance like we do on our single family rentals with the BRS method. So they sent out a third party appraiser, the property appraised for $1.6 million. So we were able to add $500,000 of equity in those two years by increasing cash flow and decreasing the expenses. So we did that, we added $500,000 and we did 8% cash out refinance. We took the difference between what we owed the bank and that 8% cash out refinance and we were able to pay back our initial lender, his $220,000, plus $20,000 kicker that I talked about earlier. So he gave us 220, we gave him around $1,500 a month, plus we were able to give him an extra $20,000 at the end, and now we own the property and cash flow went up because we stopped paying our private lender, we got better terms on the refinance, and now we own a third unit apartment complex that we did not use any of our own money to do. All right. Hopefully that opened your mind to the different possibilities. We do this kind of stuff all day, every day. We buy apartments, we buy storage facilities, we buy single family rentals, we flip, we wholesale, we rent. We do it all and we think of creative ways to make it happen. If you appreciated that or appreciate this kind of content, make sure to subscribe to this channel. We do two videos a week. I go live once a week, so we give as much free content as possible. So make sure to subscribe and then comment in this video if you've done anything like this before or if you found this interesting. See you on the next one.